Good morning. Good morning. 
It is great to be here together in God's house as we worship together. Today is the Epiphany of our Lord. Uh, we're celebrating that today. The day of Epiphany was yesterday, but we're uh, recognizing and celebrating that today uh, in worship. And as we celebrate Epiphany, we celebrate the wonderful truth that God's grace is for all people, including you and me. And so that will be our focus as we uh, worship together. And we'll begin with our opening hymn, number 307. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. a star you made known your only begotten son to the Gentiles. Lead us who know you by faith to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. morning. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the, pe the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your arising. Lift up your eyes all around you, and see they all gather together. They come to you, your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant, your hearts shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, and the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Hepha 
all those from Sheba shall come, that shall bring gold and frankincense, that shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I have written briefly, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men and other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, through I am the very least of all the saints, this was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plain of the mystery hidden for ages and God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be known, but by now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the internal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have fullness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going in to the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. At this time we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. 
And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and children are welcome forward for the children's message. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Did you guys know that Epiphany is sometimes referred to as the Gentiles Christmas? Right? And so what that means is that that's for us too. The, the good news of Epiphany is we see the, the Magi, the wise men from the East come and worship Jesus. It is the fact that, that the gift of Jesus is a gift that is for everybody. Right? It's for you. It's for me. And it's for everybody around us. Right? That's a, a wonderful blessing, right? To know that, that Jesus and, and his gifts are for us. Now, do we want to keep those that good news and those gifts to ourselves? No, right? We want to share that, right? Because it's good news that it's for all people. So that means that there is no one that you will ever see or meet that that isn't loved by God. That that isn't someone that God wants to be his his uh, family member for all of eternity. Right? And so we want to share that good news, that God's grace, his forgiveness, his love is for everybody. Okay? And that, that's, that's really at the heart of what Epiphany is all about. And you'll hear that uh, in the sermon in just a little bit. And that's what I want you to remember today with, as we celebrate Epiphany, that God's grace is for everybody. It's for you and for everyone that you'll ever meet. Okay? So will you fold your hands and, and pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you. For sending Jesus as a gift for all people. Help us to share his love, his grace, and his forgiveness with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much. You can take one of these back to your seats. And our worship continues with the hymn of the day.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on Christmas morning, many congregations sang Isaac Watts' familiar hymn, Joy to the World. And we here at Grace were certainly one of them. I want to share with you the third verse of that hymn because it applies very well to our celebration of Epiphany. It reads, No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. When we sing that verse, we are reminded how the curse's reach has extended very far indeed. But also, has God's blessing in Christ. And that is the message of Epiphany. Matthew's account of the Magi is a familiar text to us. But as with many familiar texts, sometimes its edge has grown dull a little bit. Over the years, these gift bearers have sneakily crept into the manger scene, standing alongside the shepherds as if they belonged there together. And as a result, the significance of these strange visitors from the east may easily be missed. But the Magi remind us how the Christian message is one of radical inclusion. Not only has God chosen to appear in the unlikeliest of places, like the manger and the little town of Bethlehem, but if the blessings of God in Christ truly flow far as the curse is found, then he has also chosen to draw toward himself for worship the unlikeliest of people. And that has significant implications for us, both for how we think of ourselves in relation to God and for how we think of those outside the church who seem far from God. And to unpack this, we're going to spend some time reflecting more closely on three sets of people. And the common thread between them is the blessings of God in Christ that flow even to them. And so first, we look at the Magi. And actually, we don't know a whole lot about these people. And furthermore, what we do know is probably inaccurate. These people, although we call them wise men, were really not that wise. First, the Magi go to Jerusalem, the wrong city. They clearly were not faithful readers of the Old Testament scriptures, which is an easy mistake to make. They're looking for the one born king of the Jews, so they head to where the king of the Jews lives. But they're still a foolish mess, even after meeting Jesus. They get ready to actually go tell Herod where the child is, but God intervenes to set them straight. They're warned in a dream to go back a different way. So not only were they not so wise, but we don't even know that they were kings. And there's no indication that there were three. A lot of times we just assume that there were three because there's three different gifts that are listed. It'd be more accurate, really, to describe them as pagan fools. These were sorcerers, astrologers, practitioners of the dark arts. Today, we'd probably call them members of an occult and warn our children to avoid them at all costs. In Acts 13, verse 8, Elemas, the magician, and the, the Greek word used there is the same word used for magi, he opposed Paul and tried to thwart the gospel. But Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, rebuked him, calling him a son of the devil, and struck him with blindness. And their foolishness manifests itself in their seeming ignorance of the situation in Jerusalem. It's not until the angel appeared to them that they caught wind of Herod's evil scheme. And as far as their gifts go, sometimes it's suggested that their offerings reflected wisdom, But as seminary professor Jeff Gibbs points out in his study of this text, they're probably relatively common gifts that were given to royalty. And so the long and short of it is these strange visitors from the East were immersed in the curse of a creation in full rebellion against its creator. If anyone has ever been far from God, it was them. 
which makes their worship of Jesus and their inclusion in his presence truly radical. But just as radical, though, is our presence before God. Our inclusion in God's kingdom is just as radical as the Magi's inclusion in God's kingdom. Why is that? Well, the simple answer is sin, right? Sin has separated us from God and makes us unworthy to be in the presence of a holy God. We confessed that earlier, that we are born sinful. And on top of that, we have daily sinned and fallen short of God's law and will for our lives through our sins of thought, word, and deed. The evil things that we've done and the good things that we failed to do. I don't have to list them out either, do I? We're aware that we're sinful. We are aware that we have fallen short. We look at our lives in light of the Ten Commandments and we realize that we have all failed. And another reason why our status as God's people is truly radical is that we are Gentiles. A lot of times, like I told the kids, we we hear Epiphany referred to as the Gentiles' Christmas. And that's good news. It's good news for us. It's good news that God's grace is for all people. Yes, even you and me. And that good news shapes the way that we worship. If you look at the gospel text today, we see that just before entering the house to see Jesus, the Magi rejoiced with a very great joy. Oh, that all Christians would approach the Lord's house for worship in that kind of spirit. Because as we heard last week, here in God's house, we are in the presence of our Savior. Here, we receive Christ himself in, with, and under the bread and wine of Holy Communion for the forgiveness of our sin and the strengthening of our faith. Here, God gives us his good and precious gifts of grace. Yes, once again, God's grace is for all people, even you and me. But what about all those other people? What about the people in our community who seem far from Jesus? We all come across people every day who, for one reason or another, are far from Jesus, far from his gifts of grace. What about them? Well, thankfully, God continues to reveal Jesus still today, even to us and to all those around us. Martin Luther says it like this. He says, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. God reveals Christ to us. And he sends us to reveal Christ to the world an amazing thing that is. He sends you to reveal Christ to your world. To all the places that you will go. To be able to bring Christ, to share Christ and his gifts to those around you. Speak the message of Jesus. Speak the message of his life, death, and resurrection. You've heard it, so go and tell it. God, who is faithful to create faith in you through the message, is also able to create faith through you as you share this amazing truth, that God's grace is for all people. Amen. At this time, please stand for the prayer of the church. Almighty God, enthroned forever, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. For our sakes, you sent your only begotten Son to suffer the wages of our sin, that we might be holy in your sight. As you have poured grace and salvation upon us, so anoint us also with the oil of gladness and the hope of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, eternal light, 
He made Paul a minister according to the gift of your grace. Embolden our pastors to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Open our ears to hear and our hearts to believe their message that the King of Kings has given his life for us. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you prepared a place for your son Jesus in the womb of the Virgin Mary and in the home of Mary and Joseph. Bless our homes and all who dwell in them, that your word would be heard and your mercy be shown therein. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, bring an end to all threats of violence. Raise up leaders who will act with integrity, pursue justice, and follow your commands. Grant to all people the blessing of food, shelter, medical care, and safety, and sustain those whose duty it is to protect and defend. Lord, in your mercy, give to the afflicted your comforting presence, relief in their suffering, and healing according to your will. Sustain your servants who trust in you, especially Chris Thompson, Max Linda Cleveland, Larry Whitrock, Ralph Waymeyer, Monty Fennell, Jerry Graziano, Gene Heitman, Susan Burrell, Ernestine Cooley, William Cooley, Gary Roddick, Janice Hall, Prudence Schneblin, and Justin C. Give hope to the weary and peace to the dying. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you brought the Magi of old to worship your son, Jesus, and so you have brought us to worship him also. Receive our gifts and give us Christ in his body and blood that we may return home according to your holy way. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have anointed your Son to be our Savior and have established his throne forever and ever. Grant that we who are called by his name would see his reign spread among all nations. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we gather the offering. stand. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. 
risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also did the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always. Yeah. 
I strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in peace.
strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Please stand for the singing of the Nunc Dimittis.
give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord look upon, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn number 394. joy it is to know the truth of epiphany that God's grace is for us and for all people. A few quick announcements before we go. Uh, this week, Wednesday, we have Zoom Bible study at 10 o'clock in the morning. 
And we also resume our Wednesday evening uh, Bible study at 6.30. Uh, continue to go through the book of Exodus with Pastor Warner. Um, the goal, uh, he told me, is to get through Exodus before Lent. And so uh, we will look forward to that. Um, also remember that next uh, Sunday after... Um, after worship is our next voters meeting, and so please plan on staying after for that. Um, the voters meeting packet was emailed out this week. Um, if you did not receive a copy, let me know. Um, if you don't have email, uh, paper copies are available in the back of, by where you pick up the bulletins, um, and, and let me know if you would like one of those as well. Um, that'll help uh, prepare us for the voters meeting and hopefully make things flow uh, quicker and, and more productive that way. Uh, also, if you haven't picked up your offering envelopes for uh, this year, they are on the back table as well. Um, any other announcements today? Um, starting this year to support a growing congregation, if anybody would like to be added to a list um, to make me a mom has a new baby, um, I could give you a call, and we really appreciate it. So ideally, we have enough people you won't even have to make a meal every time. Not that we will be for um, let me know, and I'll put you down on the list. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Um, anything else? Also, I believe LWML is meeting um, not to the 14th, but January 21st after worship. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, very good. Um, all right. Any, any other announcements today? All right. With that, have a great day. Rejoicing in the truth that God's grace is for you and for all. <laughs>